attendance. That would seem to be a good thing to do, especially considering I forgot to do it last time until lab. And I'll tell you what, since you guys last time were spared the go around the room and introduce yourself bit, we'll do that today. That way I'll at least hear your name pronounced correctly one time. And hopefully that'll help me get it down. Let me... All right, so let's start. Start over there. Uh, my name's Ryan Wallow. Um, Ryan Wallow. Yeah. All right, next. My name's Michael Valetka. All right. Our Zachary Well. Garrett Sermon. Oh, Garrett. Um, I'll tell you, Zachary, you, you have a great name for this class. I mean, with the last name of Webb, you should, you should be the standard bearer in this class. <laughs> Don't want to put pressure on you or anything, but I did, I, did have a, I, I did once have a yoga teacher whose son was named Matt, so I thought that was pretty appropriate as well. All right, next. All right. All right, back row. Joseph Sullivan. Okay, next. All right. All right. Oh, okay. And all right. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to review what we did last time, and we're going to expand on it. I mean, I guess that's pretty much what we're going to do every class. But um, last class being the first class, there were some very basic fundamental things that we probably need to go over again. And so I'm not going to use the example that I had last time. I'm going to create a new example from scratch. And I'm going to start out by um, defining the web page that I want to create. All right, and then we'll talk about that for a bit, and we'll do a little bit of design about it. All right, and then we'll start reviewing the stuff that we did last time and create the page. And after we do that, then we will um, expand it. And you are, give me a second, yeah. Pamela. Yeah. Sorry about that. Oh, that's all right. Okay, so. Tonight, of course, I have an important decision to make, very critical decision that I have to make. And I have to probably make it at least once a week, sometimes more often. And that decision is, is where am I going to get my pizza from tonight? All right? Now, so what are the options? Where could I get my pizza from tonight? I live in Amherst, so if you're familiar with that area, if not, we'll... Old Town. Old Town. All right, so I could get my pizza from Old Town. All right, where else could I get my pizza from? All right, we will lump those in as chains. Pizza Hut... Marco's, um, Papa John's, etc. Where else could I get my pizza from? Let's think creatively. You can make it yourself. Where else could we get pizza from? 
frozen one. Where else? This this is where this is where I don't know this might this might paint me as being a, a little bit of a mooch, right? What could I do? What was that? Friends. Yeah, like call up my friend and say, Travis, you guys watching the game tonight? <laughs> and maybe like, yeah, we're we gonna order a pizza. All right, yeah. What time do you want me to come over? You know, invite yourself over a friend. All right. Now, there might be others, but this is enough for now, all right? Um, if we were going to make a page about this, all right, and again, um, deciding where to get your pizza from is pretty important, so it does deserve to have a web page. No, just kidding. Uh, we'll use this as an example of something. So, um, again, you know, it's sort of a lighthearted, trivial topic, but I think it's a good way to illustrate some of the points. If you're going to make a page, think in your head how this page would be laid out. Again, keeping in mind the stuff that we have done so far. How would you, how would you lay out this page? Someone describe me. Or, or even, even, even sketch it out or, 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 or something. How would you break it down? Okay. Section for each of them. Maybe a list of pros and cons. All right. Anyone care to add anything? Cost. All right. Anything else? All right. Special deals that, that you might be aware of. Yes. Okay, you could possibly have links to their site. Um, some of them you can, you, or probably all of them by now, the, the, the bigger ones, you can order online. So you could have links to that. Anything else? Title. Title, yeah. Title that describes the purpose of this page. All right, maybe a paragraph to explain the dilemma. Although any pizza lover would instantly know and appreciate the dilemma, but you know, it's still, you know, you, you want to make things obvious. You don't want people guessing what your page is about. That sounds like a good start at least. All right. So let's sketch what this is going to look like. Maybe a paragraph that introduces the idea of like what this page is about in more detail. Because the headline itself might not explain the dilemma. All right. Maybe then, as someone said, we have a section for each option. So, Old Town. And again, I am, I, I'm not a paid endorser of Old Town Pizza. If anyone associated with Old Town Pizza happens to see this video and wants to strike up some sort of advertising deal with me, <laughs> uh, feel free to give me a call, care of Lorain County Community College. All right. The chains. Now, interesting thing here is I said the chains instead of like enumerating them. Why do you? Is that a good idea? Or should I have Pizza Hut, Marcos? Papa John's as separate sections. What do you think? Okay, maybe have maybe have a, a, a section for chains, and and maybe then having underneath this Pizza Hut, Papa John's, uh, Marcos. All right. What were the other ones we said? Make yourself. Mm 
frozen and friends. <laughs> Sublist of friends. And we can even rank them by the likelihood that we think that they will be having pizza or will be less offended if we call and invite ourselves over. You know, the casual acquaintances will be like, I haven't heard for you since the last time you were hungry versus, hey, yeah, we always hang out. So, so we could maybe have a list of friends. With Frozen, I suppose we could have a list of brands if we wanted to, and so on. Again, I think it's good sort of the organization that we came up with because it seems to me like if I think of ordering pizza, again, you know, this isn't a class about my dietary habits, all right, but if I think of ordering pizza, it's exactly something like this. It's like, should we go to Old Town or should I call for delivery? All right. Once I decide to call for delivery, then I'm going to think, well, where am I going to go? All right. Or if I think, you know what, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go to Old Towns. I'm not going to call for delivery. I'll just stop at Giant Eagle on the way home and pick something. And what kind will I pick? Well, I'll take a look at what's in there, take a look at what's in my wallet, and buy the best one with the money I have left. All right. So, in other words, DiGiorno's, Totino's, Giant Eagle brand doesn't deserve to be sort of on the same level as with Old Town, nor does Pizza Hut, Papa John's, and Marco's deserve to be. They're like sub-levels of another topic. Chain, Old Town, Make It, Frozen, Friends. Those will be the list of things like top-level options that popped into my head. And then underneath some of them, there's some sub-options. Now, again... A big part of the point of this exercise is to show you that it pays to think through a problem. All right? Now, when I first brought this to your attention and I first defined the problem that we were going to have, maybe it popped in your head, well, we'll just have a list of the places that we could get pizza from. All right? Whereas if you think about the problem in more detail, obviously, Getting it out, making it your own frozen comes to mind, but some of the more creative options maybe don't come to mind, or maybe make it yourself didn't come to mind for some people. All right? And maybe since you are, uh, you know, um, less rude than me, mooching off of friends maybe didn't come off uh, in your head as, as an option. So, in my mind, what we've done is we've sketched out the page. This is web design. Now, it is a very simplistic web design because the tools that we have so far, we haven't covered a lot of them. We've had one class, and we've covered some very basic tags, all right? So we have not gone into great detail about how to maybe have columns on the pages or whatever, all right? So we have a simplistic design because we've only scratched the surface of all the tags that are available in web development. But still... Even with a simplistic design like this, we've thought through the problem and we've come up with a plan of how to attack it. All right? And that's really what design is. Now, as you start talking about bigger projects and more complicated pages, and as we get more tools under our belt, all right, this is going to expand, of course. But the idea is, is that any problem, no matter how simple, it pays to think through before you do it. All right. Now, to be sure, we may alter our plans as we're developing this. All right. <laughs> when I actually get down to listing the friends, um, maybe, um, maybe I think, you know what, that's probably not a good idea. I'm going to include, uh, you know, not include that as an option. So it's possible we're going to change our plan. All right. But still. That's from a informed, educated, thought-through process as opposed to just not thinking about that as a possibility. 
All right, so that's, that's important. So if you have a plan, don't worry if you deviate from the plan. If you've thought through the, through the problem a little bit more and you decided you want to take a different approach, it's kind of like if you might plan a trip from here to Columbus and maybe you are going to go down I-71. And maybe you hear on the radio that there's an accident somewhere on I-71, so you take a detour, all right? Extra information that you get during the process causes you to change your plan a little bit. That's great, you know? It's great to change your plan based on new information or based on new thoughts that you have or whatever. But it's better to have a plan that you think through and change than just say, I'm going to drive to Columbus and I think it's south of here, so I'm just going to go south on Abbey Road and see where we end up. All right? Yeah, we may end up in Columbus eventually. We may up in the, we end up in the Gulf of Mexico if we miss it and go past it. All right? So this is web design to me. A lot of folks, when they hear the term web design, they think of what color, what fonts, um, those sorts of things. Those are important parts of web design although not necessarily for the reasons you may think of, all right? But this is possibly even a more important aspect of web design, thinking about what content you want to have on a page and how it's going to be structured. All right, so now let's go about trying to make this page. All right, let's try to make this web page. Did someone... Uh, forget that the screen was down and start writing on it. <laughs> That's kind of funny. All right. So, I'm going to open up Notepad. And hopefully everyone can see it when I make the font bigger. All right. Someone tell me something that you remember from the first class. All right. Very good. First of all, we need to identify this as an HTML document, all right? And that'll help the browser know how to handle it, all right? There's a few things that help the browser and the web server know how to handle this file, and one of them is what is called the doc type. The doc type identifies that, hey, this is an HTML document. The doc type for HTML5 looks like this. And this should be at the top of every page that you develop. All right. What's something else that we learned last time? HTML tag. All right. First of all, what do tags look like? Greater than, less than sign. It's all right. So we have the less than sign this and then a greater than sign. Between those is the name of the tag. All right. Again, this is another indication that, hey, this is an HTML document. What's something else that we learned about tags? There's a closing tag. And I'm going to go and put some blank spaces here. All right, and there's a closing tag. A closing tag, between the starting and ending tag is sort of the contents of the tag. So that goes around, that wraps a particular piece of content on your web page and tells the browser what that is. In this case, it's just saying, well, hey, I have some HTML here. All right, so everything between there and there, everything in this area here is our web page. All right. It's not 100%, but for the most part, every starting tag has an ending tag. 
There's a few cases where you don't have to have one, but even where you don't have to have one, I typically put one in just to be consistent. All right. Next thing. What's another thing that we learned last time? Pardon me? The title. All right. Where does the title go in a web page? In the head section. All right. Um, the one thing uh, that we learned last time is that there's two main sections to a web page the head and the body. Now the title tag belongs as part of the head. So I'll go in and I'll put title. For now, the title is the only thing that's going to appear in the head section. That'll change as we learn some more stuff. But for now, the title is the only thing that, that, that shows in there. And the title is what appears up on the title bar. It will also appear if you put your mouse over that there. Just like Internet Explorer popped up, if we opened up a web page, the title would appear there. So it's important to make your title descriptive. All right, and it's important to include a title, and it's important to make it descriptive. So it doesn't actually appear, uh, the title doesn't appear within the main window. It appears on the top of the window in the title bar. All right. All right, something else that we learned. The different levels of headings. And um, we're going to start out by having an H1. Now I'm going I'm 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 to start off reviewing, then I'm going to add some things in that we covered last time. Or that we did not cover last time, rather. So I'm going to put an H1 here. And I'm going to put a paragraph just again, just to make it absolutely clear the purpose of this page for anyone coming uh, to the page. Um, I mentioned last time a book in our library, Don't Make Me Think, that talks about you want people instantly to look at your page and understand what it is you're trying to say. All right. And therefore, it's almost like you can't be too obvious. All right. Um, even if you are a worldwide company, the Ford Motor Company, or something like that, you know, if you go to Ford.com, there still probably should be a little blurb on here saying, this is a website of the Ford Motor Company, so people know it's that, not the Ford Foundation or whatever, all right? So I'm going to say, you know, tonight... with the basketball game. Pizza seems like the perfect dinner. Of course, if I was doing this tomorrow and there was no basketball game, I'd come up with another reason why perfect uh, the pizza is a perfect dinner. All right, so there's just coincidentally there's a basketball game tonight. All right. So I wrote a paragraph about that that serves just as an introduction. Now, H1 again means a top-level heading. 
top level if we were thinking of it in terms of an outline. All right. The P tag simply indicates that it's a paragraph. All right. It's a paragraph of plain text. Now, by default, the browser is going to make the H1 tag, the text in the H1 tag, bigger and the paragraph text smaller. All right. We can, however, later on, we'll learn CSS that we can use to um, change that and do anything we want with it. You know, we could, for example, make the paragraph in the H1 the same size text and maybe indicate the difference between color or have them being different fonts or whatever. All right. The things like color and size of font and style of font and all that are all things that we can change to make our page more understandable. We don't just change them to make it look better, although that's a goal as well, to make the page look better. But we'll do things so that it's more obvious to the user how it's organized. We could, for example, in this case here, we could put a border around every section and that would help the, the user visually identify and, and understand the page at, at a glance. All right. Now, notice a few things. These tags are both within the body tag, so that means it will appear within the screen, the window, the body of the page. This is nested, uh, again, within the body, but they're not nested within each other. In other words, this one H1 and H1. What that is saying is everything between here and here is a top level heading. Everything between here and here is a paragraph. Now notice that I put breaks in here. I didn't type it in in one line going across. I could have done that if I wanted to, but I chose not to because I think this makes the code more readable. More readable for me, more readable for you, more readable for anyone that's going back and changing the page at a later point. Remember that the browser is going to ignore this extra space. So, in other words, the browser is not going to separate it into a bunch of lines. The browser is simply going to make it one line going across. Let's save this and take a look at it within the browser. Remember again that there's two ways that we can view a web page. We can view the internals of it, which is what we're doing now through Notepad where we're seeing the actual code. But then there's also viewing it within the browser, which is how when we're finished with the web page and we publish it to the internet, that's how everyone else is going to see it. So let me go up here and say file save. I'm going to put it on the desktop. And we want to change this save as type to all files. And I'm going to give it a name, pizza.html. And I click save. So there's our file. The little blue E indicates there's a web page as opposed to a Word document or a text document or an Excel spreadsheet or something like that. If I double click it, I will view the way it will look in the browser. And it's just as we expected. All right. H1 is bigger because by default, top level heading, the browser makes it bigger. Even though there's breaks in this, all right, it displays it as a single line. All right. As the window gets smaller, it does the wrapping for you. Notice. And that's a good thing. You can imagine a mobile phone if this page is being viewed on. Mobile phone would be, the browser window might be that big. Notice that, you look at it, yeah, that looks reasonably good in a mobile phone. Whereas if we were on a desktop machine, well, there it takes advantage of all the space. All right. So the browser takes care of a lot of things for you. And that's a good thing. I sometimes sound like Martha Stewart in this class, and it's a good thing. It is a good thing. All right, but that's something you don't need to worry about. It handles that for you. 
It is a consideration, and again, right now, we're not doing much in terms of styling the web page. We're focusing on the content of the web page. But it is a consideration now of how your page is going to look on a mobile device, right? Because back, say, 10 years ago, you know, typically everyone when they were on the web was on the web either on a laptop or a desktop machine. Now many people use a mobile device to, to browse the web. So it's really important um, that your, your pages look good across platforms. And we'll investigate that further. Now, some common mistakes. All right. I'm going to go, and again, I'm going to keep it open in the browser, and I'm going to keep it open in Notepad. Remember, there's only one file. I'm just going to look at it two different ways. Let's say, by mistake, I do that. All right? Let's see what happens. Interesting. What difference did it make? I don't think it made any difference. Let's go back. Nope, no difference at all. Gee, I broke one of the rules and it really didn't matter. All right. Interesting. Let's say I forget the H1 tag altogether. Ooh. Now, this is something that is tough for me to explain precisely why this is, because I didn't write the code for the browser. But I can do my best to sort of explore the practical implications of this. We broke the rules, right? In this case, we broke the rules by not having an end h1 tag. So let's pretend we're the browser for a second. What do you think the browser said to itself? It said, well, here's where I start my h1 tag. I'm going to make everything big and bigger than normal until I reach the end h1 tag. Well, it made it to the end of the file and it didn't find an end h1 tag. So, it made everything on the page bigger. All right. The browser gives it the good old college try, as they say, even if you've broken the rules. In this case, I've also broken the rules. All right? If I put an end h2 tag there. But guess what? The browser still sort of figures out what to do. How does it know to do in one case and not know what to do in another? I don't know. I didn't write the browser. My point is is that if you don't follow the rules of HTML, your results are unpredictable. The browser is going to do its best to figure out what's going on. And it might figure it out and display it the way that you want it to, or it might not figure it out and display it in some different manner. So your best bet for having the page look the way you want to is by following all the rules. All right? And it's also important to test your page in other browsers because different browsers interpret things differently. For example, let's open up this page in Google Chrome. I'll do a right mouse, open with Google Chrome. All right, that did the same thing as Internet Explorer. And I'll bet you Firefox would do the same thing instead. However, you can't depend on that and you do need to test it. So, if you break the rules of HTML, sometimes there's consequences, sometimes there isn't. 
all depending on how the browser interprets it. You know, think of it like um, giving directions to a friend of how to get somewhere. If you say, you know, go down First Street until you hit Brown Avenue and then make a right there. If the person gets to Brown Avenue and sees that it's a one-way street and you can't make a right and thinks, oh, I'll bet you they just got confused and made a left. Maybe you did get confused and they should make a left. Or maybe you didn't mean, mean Brown Avenue, but you meant Brownson Avenue or something like that. All right. So when you give the browser incorrect instructions, that is when you do not follow the rules of HTML, it tries. All right. And it might get it right, and it might not get it right. Okay, any questions at this point? Yes? Yeah, I'm going to talk about that right now. There's a set of new tags in HTML5 that provide a few benefits. They'll provide benefits when we get into styling our web pages via CSS. And they're simply a more detailed way of describing our page to the browser, and, and that's good. And these are, I think the textbook calls them like top-level structural tags. And back in the old days of web development, prior to HTML5, there was one of these, and it was called a div. And div simply meant division like a division of the page, a section, a part of the page. Now they've sort of fine-tuned these, where they've created a top-level structural tag, and they all more or less work the same way as a div does, except they're more specific. So you can get into more flexibility as far as styling and so on. Those top-level tags are... I hope I remember all of them. Header. Nav. Article. Section. Aside. footer. I think that's all of them. All right. I'm pretty sure that's all of them. Now, header is different than the head. It's unfortunate that they chose two things with like that, that are almost spelled the same, you know, almost the same word. But remember, don't blame me. I didn't make this, this up. I'm just explaining it to you. The header is like this on the page. Something that appears like on the top of the page, typically, a header, that sort of just gives general information about what the page is. If I was a company and I had my logo, that's where it would appear. It would appear in the header section. And, uh, and so on. It, it sort of introduces the page and says, hey, this is, this is what the page is about. The nav is for links. Now, we haven't talked about links yet, but we will soon. And an important part of web development is making it clear for people how to get around your site, how to find the different pieces of information. All right? So being able to put a set of links in a nav tag and separate it that way is, is very valuable. So we'll, we'll cover um, nav in a bit. Article and section are very similar. Don't agonize about it. In other words, don't sit there worrying too long. Gee, is this an article or is this a section? In general, I would say that an article is like sort of an article that you'd read in a magazine. All right? Um, where, you know, you're telling a little mini story, you know. So I might have, you know, if I look at this page, the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to say I have 
five little articles. All right? Because then we have a little mini article about each one of those things. All right? But you know what? You could also call those sections. It's not that big a deal. All right? They simply divide the page into pieces. And those pieces are sort of like the main content of the page. So both article and section are like the main content of the page. Header is sort of the identifying information. Navigation is the links. This is the main content of the page. The aside is sort of like uh, additional information. All right, like a sidebar. Like maybe on this page, I would put in the history of pizza, a paragraph just explaining how pizza was invented and so on. It's not really the main content of the page, but it's something that people visiting this page might find interesting. But you put it to the aside. Now, books, uh, textbooks, and, and magazines, and newspapers do this all the time. Um, for example, they, uh, you know, if there is an article about the basketball game tonight, they may talk about the preview and this, that, and the other. And there might be a little aside about, um, you know, LeBron James's coach uh, in high school or something like that. You know, what his thoughts are about the game tonight. All right? It's not like the important, most important point of the article, but it's like an item of additional interest. And... Maybe you think that's interesting, maybe it's not. But you sort of put it aside, put it on the side, like a sidebar, all right, so that you can look at it and you can either ignore it or read it, as opposed to incorporating it in the main article, all right. So you sort of put that off to the side. A footer is just the opposite of a header. It appears at the bottom of the page. And it uh, would say things like, you know, maybe copyright information, contact me, you know, maybe a link to my Kickstarter fund to order pizza tonight, or whatever, all right? Sort of information that is um, not necessarily the main content of the page, but isn't, like, important enough to be up in the header or the other sections, you know, that kind of thing, all right? Stuff that's important to have, but stuff that you don't want to emphasize. Let's put it that way. All right? So, we're going to put all these things in, or we're not going to put all these things in. We're going to put some of these things in the page we're going to make. This, for example, is going to be the header. And then we'll have an article for each of these sections. Then we'll have a footer on the bottom. All right? So let's go back to our page. And... I'm going to start off by putting this stuff in a header tag. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm going to put a footer tag in here right now, and I'm just going to put copyright Mike Zeller's 2015. Because it would be important to copyright these words of wisdom. All right. Now I'm going to start off and I'm going to do one article. All right. And depending on the time, we might do more than one article or we might do all of them or, or whatever. All right. So I'm going to do my article.
about Old Town. Now, notice that I used an H1 for that. It's a little confusing. It's, it's H1 because it's top level within this section. Okay? So, it's the, it's the most important headline within this section. So, maybe I'll have a paragraph. Old Town is in downtown Amherst. Dine in or carry out, etc. I'm not going to go into more detail until my endorsement deal goes through. So, sort of just introducing, um, you know, um, sort of introducing this section, its relevance. I think a good way to do this, as is, is was indicated by a few students, is to have uh, a pros and cons. So, I'm going to make an H2 for pros. And an H2 for cons. So, the pros of Old Town Pizza, I would say, are the pizza is very good. Another pro, they have a variety of toppings. Another advantage they have is they have a variety of specialty pizzas. Another advantage is, I'm trying to think, I know they have, they have pop there, so you can buy, buy beverages there. So if I had to buy pop, I uh, wouldn't have to make a, a separate stop somewhere. That, that could be important. All right. They support community teams. Very good. And so on. Okay. The cons, I can think of two. A little more expensive than some of the alternatives. And I at least don't think, I don't think they deliver. I, I don't know for sure. Okay, they don't. They don't deliver. All right. So this is my article about Old Town. I have a little introduction under the H1. I have a paragraph introduction. Then I have a pros and cons section. So let's save this and take a look at it. All right. Old Town, pros and cons. Now. Much la later in the semester, we're going to be able to do things like, for example, put a border around the Old Town stuff or put extra space between the end of the Old Town article and the footer. But bear with us for now. It happens every semester that students that are getting this, they, like, they want to do more. And I'll be glad to talk to you in lab about that uh, and in the upcoming weeks and classes. I'm not sure exactly when, but when we get into CSS, we'll be able to do a lot more with this. Now, one thing I would say is, all right, getting a pizza, that's fine. Tonight, with uh, that's fine. Old Town, that paragraph would be fine. 
What about this paragraph? What do you think about this paragraph? Would be a lot better as a list. This essentially is a list of items, right? A list of reasons, a list of, of positive things about Old Town. Why is it better as a list? Exactly. For one thing, this, this is a list, all right? It's not a paragraph talking about the, the, the kind of wood, wood burning ovens that they have and, and, you know, and explaining that Old Town was founded in 19 whatever or, or so on. It doesn't read like a paragraph. It reads like a list. So an important concept in HTML is use the tags that represents what the content really is. And this is really a list. So we're going to use different tags. Tags we haven't talked about yet, but we'll use the list tags. All right. Now, um, another reason that it's good, all right, is that people tend to read websites a little different than they read like a book or a novel, right? Um, people, when they go to websites, typically, you know, now again, there are exceptions. Um, Keep in mind, every website is its own thing. So if I make general statements, I'm talking about in general. And you could always find exceptions to that. But if we're talking about a typical run-of-the-mill website for a pizza place or for talking about something like this, people typically want to scan the page. They don't want to read it in detail. They're not reading for enjoyment, or they're not reading to see how beautifully you use words or anything like that. They're reading to get an answer to a question. Like, why should I order from Old Town? I don't want to read a long paragraph about that it was founded in 19-whatever, and it has this kind of oven, and blah, 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 blah. I just want to see, oh, pizza's good. Oh, they have specialty pizzas. Boy, that sounds interesting, you know, and so on. All right? So I'm going to turn this into a list. Now, the list here, we could debate what's the most important one of these reasons, right? I mean, some people might say, yeah, supporting small businesses is very important. So I'm going to make that the top thing on the list. Other people might say, well, I like really good pizza, so I'm going to put that at the top of my list. There's no like natural order for these things. These are just in an arbitrary order. They're in the order that they popped into my head. That kind of list is called an unordered list. When you have a list of items where the order is not clearly defined. Now, the opposite of an unordered list is cleverly enough an ordered list. An example of an ordered list would be if I was going to rank the top pizza chains in the United States by sales in 2014. In that case, I didn't make up the order. You know, whoever sold the most is number one. Whoever sold the second most is number two. Whoever sold the third most is number three. All right? So in that case, the ranking does matter. You know, you wouldn't want to have a list where the third thing down is, is the chain that sold the most and the first one was the chain that sold the second most and so on. That would be terribly confusing. So there's two kinds of lists, ordered lists and unordered lists. All right. We're going to start with an unordered list because that makes more sense to me in this case. So, unordered list contains... Starts with a UL tag. UL, of course, standing for unordered list. It then ends with an end UL tag, of course. All right? Because that's how tags are. All right? Each item in the list is put in an LI tag.
So, I will have for each of these items an li tag. So there's my start li. And here is my end li. There's one UL because this is one list. All right. If I had the disadvantages, I wouldn't put it in the same list. It would be a second list. But I wouldn't have five lists here. I have one list with five list items. Let me go in and put the UL here. And now, let's go and look at the page. All right. I think already we're seeing how that's a lot better if we were doing this sort of page. If we were listing advantages and disadvantages of a certain thing, that it would be much better to do it this way. Questions so far? Let's say, oh yeah, go ahead. That's a good question. If, if this is an H1 and this is an H1, why is it not the same? Because this is an H1 that is in a section or an article and this is an H1 that is within a header. Same reason, I would say. Yes. But they're H1s and H2s within an article. Let's, well, that's what Internet Explorer did with it. Let's see if another browser handles it differently. Um, it looks the same to me in both in... Internet Explorer and Chrome, other than the fact. Yeah, that, that apparently is the uh, browser default. Now, this is going to become a moot point very shortly. Because as we get into CSS, we'll be able to control that to make them any way we want to. So, yeah, I agree. That's a little bit goofy. And I can't tell if, if they're exactly the same size or if maybe they're slightly smaller. But, yeah, you're right. The, the H1s are different sizes, one in the header, one in the article. And the H1s and H2 within an article are the same size. So... All right, let's say I want to turn one of these into an ordered list. I don't think it's appropriate here, but let's say, for example, that um, the cons, you know, and the real life situation, today's a day before payday. So how expensive it is, is the most important reason, <laughs> is the most important disadvantage. So how do I make it into an ordered list? You simply put an OL instead of a UL. And then if we refresh it, notice instead of bullet points you get the numbers one and two. Now, things such as I don't like bullet points. I want to use something else. I want to use 
a little graphic of a pizza as my bullet point. Or I don't want numbers, I want Roman numerals. Or I want letters, or whatever. All those things are, are, are done or accomplished via CSS. Remember, HTML is about the content of the page. Hey, I got a list here. Here's the five items in that list. That's what we define. That's the content of the page. The fact that we want that to be with little dots as bullet points or some other character as bullet points, that is controlled via CSS. That's the appearance of it. Real important concept in web development is separating the presentation and the content. The presentation is how it looks. The content is, you know, the content of the page. HTML is going to contain the content of the page. Right now, our appearance is handled strictly by the browser and the browser defaults. As we move on, we will start using CSS to control the appearance of the page. And at that point, the way our page looks is going to be a combination of the CSS and the browser's default behavior. Now, does Old Town have a website? Maybe. I think they do. Look at that. You type in O-L-D-E and Old Town Pizza Amherst is one of the top selections. Wow. That's a topic for another day, but is Old Town Pizza and Amherst so world famous that Google will put it on the top of the list for everyone in the world? No, it knows that we're in the Amherst area. Kind of spooky, huh? And there we go, Old Town Pizza House. All right, let's say we want to make a link to this page, because that would be reasonable, right? If I'm saying that they have a lot of specialty pizzas, someone visiting this page might say, hmm, I wonder what those are, right? A logical conclusion, right? Because if they're especially pizzas, uh, like stuff that you wouldn't like, then that's really not that much of an advantage, right? But if they're like specialty pizzas where you go, ooh, that looks good, then that becomes a greater advantage. So let's make a link to this web page. All right. So, the tag to make a link is the A tag. And I can put that A tag around any text I want or even an image later on when we get to images, and I can make that text become a link. Again, I'm marking up the text. I'm saying the words, if, I'm, if I want this to be the link, right now that ain't the link. That is not the link, all right? It's just plain old text. If I want to make that into a link, I just need to put the appropriate markup. I have to mark it up, just like you did with a highlighter in a textbook to say this is important. Well, in this case, I'm saying this is a link. All right? And the tag to do that is the A tag. Now, I'm going to leave some space in here. I'm going to put the end A tag there. All right? So the words that are going to be the link are Old Town Pizza. What seems to be missing from this link. Yeah, the link to what, right? The A tag simply says I have a link, okay? So when I click on that link, where do I go to? Well, go to one of the other of trillion web pages that exist, or billion, or whatever. I have to give more information about it. It's not just a link anywhere, it's a link to a specific website. I'll give you an example. Let's say um, I was asking one of you to help me uh, pull something out of my car. 
I had something that, that I, I couldn't carry on my own, so I asked you for help. If I said, go to my car and, and could you please go to the car, my car and get the boxes in the back? All right? Well, if you walked out in the parking lot and looked, you'd see uh, hundreds of cars, right? Which one of those is my car? I'd need to give you some additional information. Like, I could tell you the color and the make of it, right? And maybe that would work. I could give you some identifying characteristics, like what bumper stickers I have, and that would maybe work, or so on. What would be the definitive way to tell you which one my car was? The license plate number, right? Because there could be two cars of the same make and model. I've seen that, and it, I, parked that, I parked close to one, and it freaked me out. You, you walk up to it, it's like, something doesn't look right. That car's clean on the inside. Did, did someone break into my car and clean it while I was in the mall? You know, amazing. But if I gave the license number, there's no doubt whatsoever, because no two people ought to have the same license number. Well, URL is the same way, all right? There could be an Old Town Pizza in Venice, all right? One in Tokyo, one in Melbourne, but there is only one oldtownpizzahouse.com. That is unique. So that is a way to identify specifically the web page I want to go to. So, I have to somehow tell it that not only is this a link, it's a link to this specific page. So I have to give additional information about the tag. And additional information about a tag is called an attribute. All right? What kind of car is it? It's a blue one. That's more information about the car. You know more about the car than you did a minute ago. Um, how many bumper stickers are on the car? A bunch of them. That's additional information. That's an attribute. Well, the attribute that's most important here is the URL. And attributes in HTML look this way. You have, an, you have the name of the attribute. In this case, href, which stands for hypertext reference. It's like the link that you're getting at. And then you have... Oops. the actual value of the URL. Now, it's important to put HTTP colon slash slash in front of it. If you notice here in the browser window, you don't see that. It's there though. All right. When I copied and pasted it, I got it. It just it just sort of hides that for you because it knows it needs that. The Google Chrome browser knows that it needs the HTTP. So a href equals, and then within sing or within double quotes is the name of the attribute in this case, or the value of the attribute in this case, the URL. Attributes in HTML always work this way. You have the name of the attribute that says what its purpose is, an equal sign, and then enclosed in quotes you have the value of the attribute. And there are predefined attributes for most every HTML tag. All right. I'm going to save this, make sure that it works. All right. And then I am going to break it and show you some issues and some troubleshooting issues or troubleshooting techniques. So I'm going to save this and hit refresh. Notice now Old Town Pizza is blue and underlined. That's the default or the browser's default method of indicating that something is a link. 
Why is the words Old Town Pizza blue and underlined and uh, blue and underlined and not the rest of it? Well, because the words Old Town Pizza are between my start A tag and my end A tag. And if I click on it, boom, I go to Old Town Pizza's web page. I want to go back, I hit the back arrow. Notice now that link has changed. How is the link changed? Pardon me? It's purple. It's, purple. it's a different color. All right. What does that indicate? That I visited that page. Right, exactly. That is a default behavior of the browser, and later on we can change it if we want to. That is a valuable navigation item. All right. That helps the user understand what parts of your site they visited. So, if you're looking for a specific piece of information, and you're on a big web website that has many pages, by looking you can see, based on color or other method, of what pages you've already been on. So, oh, I don't want to go back there because I was already at that page and I didn't find what I was looking for. All right. Questions about this? Let's break this. First way to break it is I am going to get rid of the HTTP in front. I click on it, boom, this page can't be displayed. If you look up here, you'll see, a little hard to see, but it says C users, lab instructor, desktop, blah, blah, blah. In other words, it is looking for that page on my machine. So if I do not have the HTTP in front of it, it doesn't understand that the page is a web page that is somewhere else on the internet and it thinks it's one of my pages. Let's say I spell href wrong. it doesn't appear as a link. All right. Why doesn't it appear as a link? Well, the browser knows that the href attribute is missing. Therefore, it says, hey, I can't go there. I, I don't know what web page to go to, so I'm not going to treat this like a link. So if we correct it and make it href, it'll work again. Last thing, what if I did this? All right. Again. There's nothing to click on because if we look in our code, there's nothing between the start and end A. So if I put something there, it doesn't matter what I put there. If I put OB, let's put, let's put a dot there. That will become the thing that you click on. All right? which is probably not a good idea, but just for demonstration purposes. That dot is the piece that's underlined and little. But clearly that's not what we want. 
we want our text to be meaningful. Now, click here. Some folks do something like that. Click here for Old Town Pizza. Generally speaking, that's not a good idea. Later on in the semester, we will talk about accessibility, whereas how people with certain disabilities access the web. People that are blind have tools that read the screen to them. They're called, cleverly enough, screen reader tools. All right. If all your links say click here, as the person navigates the site, using the screen reader, each link is just going to say click here, click here, click here, click here. And they're not really going to understand what click here represents. So, you want to make the text of the link be meaningful. So, if I do this, If the screen reader is narrating the screen to the user, then it'll say Old Town Pizza. It'll be clear that, hey, that's probably a link to Old Town Pizza. All right? Questions? Yes? Ah, uh, uh, good, good question. That's another good one. What if we forget the end link? First of all, keep in mind that we've broken the rules, so all bets are off. Different browsers might handle it differently. So let's just look at a couple of different browsers and see how it handles it. Sure enough, the rest of the page is a link to Old Town Pizza. Let's look and see what Google Chrome does. It does the same thing. So yeah, essentially, what the browser says is, okay, here's the start of the link. Everything until I hit the end of the link is the link itself. And since it never hits the end of the link, it thinks everything's a link. Now, here's an interesting one. What if... I forget my end title. All right. Let's see what happens. Nothing. I get usually, you know, maybe once a semester, maybe once every other semester, I have a student in a panic saying, my web page disappeared. All right. And when I look at it, it's like the code is there, but let's look at it from the browser's perspective. Here I said this is the start of the title. I've never said the end of the title. And therefore, it thinks everything on the entire page is the title. Yes? Let's minimize that. Let's do it that way. All right. And in fact, maybe you won't forget the tag, but maybe you'll spell it wrong. The end tile tag. And this is going to work the same way because that's not an end title tag, that's an end tile tag. Now the message I guess I would give you from this is don't panic. All right, This is a case of um, a very tiny error can have gigantic consequences. So if something is going horribly wrong, that doesn't mean that you've made a horrible mistake. You may have made just a tiny mistake, and it will be easy enough to recover. All right? 
What if I put a tag in that the browser doesn't know at all? It just ignores it, all right? Which is kind of good if you think about it, all right? As new tags are added to the HTML languages, old browsers don't know what to do with them, so they just ignore them, all right? Not that big a deal. Yes? I have no idea. If I did have any idea, I probably still wouldn't say anything. <laughs> I'd plead the Fifth Amendment or something. Yeah. Uh, as a general rule, Firefox and Chrome are sort of based on the same engine, so they typically work about the same way. And Internet Explorer is usually the oddball. So if there's going to be issues with it, it'll be with that. Unless a person uses Internet Explorer in developing, in which case, um, the issues might be with Chrome and Firefox. That's why people ask me which web browser to uh, use for testing. Well, to start out, we're doing simple enough pages where it doesn't really matter. But later on, the answer is all of them. Use whichever browser you like for your own purposes, but test across multiple browsers. I remember, again, you, I'm getting to that age where every now and then I start stories like, I remember back in the old days when, well, I remember back when there was Internet Explorer and Netscape, all right? And it was funny because the, the, the developers that use Internet Explorer would say, Internet Explorer is a great browser and Netscape is horrible, all right? The, browsers, uh, the, the, the developers that use Netscape would say just the opposite. Netscape is a great browser and Internet Explorer is horrible. Why do you think that is? Well, yeah, yeah, that, that's it in a nutshell. In other words, as I'm developing my page, if I use Internet Explorer, I'm testing my page in Internet Explorer. If there's a problem, I'll fix it. If I wait until I'm all done developing and then test it on Netscape back then, then I'm going to get all my Netscape problems all at once. All right. And back in the old days, browser compatibility, believe it or not, was a bigger issue than it is now even. All right? So that was a real, uh, real problem. And it was funny to, to hear otherwise logical people make those arguments like, oh, this browser is great, this browser. It's like, no, both browsers have their issues or incompatibilities. It's just that you tested and wrote to that browser's um, functionality. And then later on, you go in and you, you find that there's a problem. Questions? Yes? So, just a random question, based on my uh, Mark and whatnot, if you put the, like, see if your footer above everything else, is it still going to put it at the bottom? No. Footer? No. no. It, it'll, it'll put it where it appears. Um, keep in mind that these are more like conceptual names. I mean, I could theoretically have the header at the bottom of the page. It, so it's not, it's, it's a header not because it's always going to be at the top of the page. It's a header because it contains sort of header information, like introductory, this is what the page is about information. Other questions? I'd like to do one more thing. Let's real quick add another article. Real quick, let's add an article.
The advantages, of course, is that it's free. And the other advantage is that I get to visit friends. The cons would be <laughs> they don't deliver. The cons are it's sort of rude. And may lose friends over time. All right. So let's go and look at this. All right. Getting pizza tonight, Old Town, mooch off friends, and so on. All right. Now, if you imagine, if we added the other articles in, we'd get to have a fairly long page. All right. So we can use links to go to a, a specific directed part of the page. All right. That's another kind of link. So if you've ever seen a frequently asked questions page, they'll have a list of questions at the top. And when you click on a link, you don't go to another page. You just jump to the bottom of the page where that question is. So we're going to do something similar here. We're going to create links to these different sections. All right. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to put a nav section because this is my page navigation. And what is navigation but simply a list of links? So I'm going to make an unordered list of links. What do I put in for the href then? It's not a separate page out on the internet. I can actually put in an ID. What is an ID? An ID is a, another kind of attribute. Remember, attribute means additional information. So, since these sections of my page don't have a separate URL. I have to somehow identify them, and you identify them with an ID. We're going to use IDs for several purposes in this class, but an ID always does the same thing. It identifies something. And when I say it identifies something, it means that there's only one of those things. You know, How would it work if there were two students that had the same student ID number? That would be a mess, right? Um, one student might get the bill for both, and one student might be going for free. All right, One student might get the grades of the other student, and it just wouldn't work. The whole notion of an ID, like license plate number or student ID or whatever, is that it identifies. If you say, this is my ID number, that's you. That's no one else. All right. Same thing on a web page. If I assign an ID, there should not be anything on this page that also has an ID of Old Town by assigning the ID here. And I'm going to do the same thing with this section. And I'll say friends instead of Old Town. And then when I make the link, I use the pound sign and put in the ID. friends here. All right.
I am deliberately going to make my browser window smaller because that's more dramatic. If I click on Old Town Pizza, boom, it moves that to the top. If I click on Friends, boom, it moves that to the top of the page. So I can jump right to that section of the page. So I can have sort of an internal um, navigation to, to navigate through um, sections of the page. And this is valuable, again, in, in a lot of different cases. Where I usually see it is, is I'll see it with like phone directories of, of a place. You click on the S and it takes you to the S spot in the directory. Or frequently ask, asked questions or, or whatever. Now, I can also make a link to go back to the top of the page. And that is simply... I just use the pound sign. Pound sign means the top of the page. So in other words, when I say pound sign friends, I mean go to the top of the page and look for the ID of friends, starting from the top of the page. So I can go and do this. And I have a little mini navigation working. So I'm reading that. I want to go back to the top of the page. I can click that. And I'm then at the top. Go to Old Town. Read everything about Old Town. Go back to the top. All right. There's another kind of, well, there's, there's actually a few other kinds of links. But one other kind of link that we haven't considered is when we go to another page that you've created that lives on your web server, that's on your computer. So we've looked at links between different sections of the page. We've looked at links um, to another page out on the internet. We have not let, we've not looked at linking to one of your other pages. We'll, we'll cover that on Tuesday of next week. Next week, uh, if memory serves me uh, right, uh, we will talk about those kinds of links to link to another one of our pages. And we will talk about images, putting images on our page. All right. Certainly that might be relevant here. If we look at the difference between a beautiful old town pizza and a Totino's pizza that we bought from three for three dollars at Drug Mart or something. All right, that might help us make our decision. All right. And then we'll get into at least the start of CSS. I like to start CSS um, fairly early in the course and, and do HTML and CSS together because really they together make a completed web page. Any questions? All right, we'll see you over in lab. <laughs>